It's a sunny, warm, breezy day here in Michigan today. And I, I love warmth. I love heat. Uh, I will take 95 degrees any day over the Arctic chill of Michigan January. And <clears throat> really it's because I have such nice legs. And when you have legs like mine, you need to show them off. And you can't show them off when you're wearing pants in the winter. And, and God's given me a, a lot of things. And I know he can take those things away at any moment that he wants to. But not everybody is given the same physical uh, gifts. And, and what I mean by gifts is not that I'm some superstar athlete or any of that. What I mean is I can see, I can hear, I can eat, I can swallow, I can walk, I can jump, I can run. Uh, I don't run much. I hate running. And uh, for those of you that are out there that love running, you're weird, but I hate running. And thankfully, since I've had a rebuilt knee uh, and the doctor told me don't run, I went, oh, darn, that's too bad. So I don't mind that. But I can do all those things. And all I, all I have repercussion wise is just the pain of a 45 year old body. But there are a lot of people that don't have those abilities. Uh, and and I, I found a story of, of a kid named Matt. He, Matt's blind and he plays basketball. He loves playing basketball. And for his team, he was the designated free throw shooter. And being blind, you can imagine it was, it was hard to, <laughs> to make a shot. Then how he'd do it would be his brother would have a, a pipe and he would tap the rim and then Matt would listen to it and try to triangulate where the rim was for him to shoot it each time his brother would tap it. Well, they're in a tournament game and uh, he's, a, he's the designated free throw shooter. He's at the line and his big brother Joe taps the rim. The team is down by one. There's just a few seconds left in the game and poor Matt is 0 for 6 so far. The big goose egg. And then he hits the first one. And then he hits the second one. And they win the game. Matt needed his big brother. He needed his strong sibling to come along. And a lot of times we need a strong sibling sometimes to help us through things, difficult things. I tell my kids, uh, that they're going to be with their siblings the rest of their life, really. And even after I'm long gone, their siblings are still going to be around and they're, they're the people that will love you no matter what, through whatever what. Well, we see as we start winding down our look at Joseph here in Genesis chapter 45 that Jacob's sons needed that they needed the stronger wiser brother and in the end we see that joseph saw who was responsible for everything that had happened so let's get you caught up if you're just joining us on this journey we're in genesis chapter 37 through 50 um joseph the great joseph maybe you saw the the uh, Broadway show, Joseph the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. It's not really biblically accurate, so you wouldn't want to take that as scripture. But Joseph comes along. He's the favorite son of Jacob. Uh, his brothers hate him. They hate him so much they want to kill him. They find him one day coming out. They rip his clothes off him. They toss him down into a pit. They sell him into slavery. He goes down to Egypt. Um, he ends up in this guy Potiphar's house. Potiphar is the captain of the temple guard, of the Pharaoh's guard, which is basically the head of the secret service. He rises to the top in, in Potiphar's house. Potiphar gives him control over everything. Potiphar's wife thinks Joseph's a stud. And he says, Joseph says, no, she frames him. He goes to prison. He rises through the ranks in the prison. He interprets two guys' dreams. One guy gets killed, one guy goes back to working for Pharaoh and forgets all about Joseph. And two years later, Joseph's called into Pharaoh's court because the cupbearer remembered. And Pharaoh needs his dreams interpreted. Joseph interprets them, tells Pharaoh what he's supposed to do. And then Pharaoh says, you're hired. And, uh, and, and Joseph is now in Pharaoh's house. He is in charge of 
all the savings. So during all of the feast, remember seven years of feast, seven years of famine. During the feast, they saved and saved and saved and saved. And Joseph was in charge of this. And now in the famine, they're selling and selling and selling. And last time we talked about how Joseph's brothers showed up. Joseph stood there, look what the cat dragged in. But Joseph didn't tell him who he was. And we left off with Joseph being angry at them, accusing them of being spies. And we're kind of skipping through the story a little bit here. So we're not going, you know, verse for verse through this whole story of Joseph. But Joseph accuses them of being spies and uh, he sets them up to... <laughs> Um, you should read the story if you haven't ever read it fully all the way through. But we left off with Joseph making them go back to get their youngest brother, Benjamin, while Simeon stayed in prison in Egypt. Um, and they have now returned with Benjamin. They're back seeing Joseph. And that's where we pick up right now. So you can, you can look at Genesis 45. We're actually going to look at uh, Genesis 15 first because what we see there is that Abraham is promised the greatness of the nation. And God even tells Abraham how this whole thing's going to play. That they're going to be have a stay in Egypt. They're going to get out of Egypt and even tells them who will make it to the promised land. Well, here we are in 45. This is chapter 45. This is the start of that whole process leading us to the Exodus. And Joseph, the brothers are back, and the brothers still don't know uh, who Joseph is. They just know he's the boss, and he could have them killed at any second, whatever he wanted to do. And Joseph just can't stand it anymore. And so he kicks everyone out of the room, all of his attendants, everybody from Egypt, everyone except his brothers are kicked out of the room. And after it's just him and his brothers... You can see it. It's verse 3 in, in chapter 45. He tells them who he is. And I'm sure he shouted it. I am Joseph. And you can you can see the, the faces go, what? Can you see it? I mean, you're picturing the movie. And they probably didn't believe him. And there's times where I get, you know, God and I are going to have a discussion about this when I get up there. Because you just need a little bit more detail in the Bible. Because I would... To, to see, I, I just imagine, no, you're not. No, Joseph's dead. He went off. No, I'm him. I am Joseph. I'm your brother. Uh, and, and who knows, you know, the, the movie things where you got to you know, answer questions that only someone else you know, that really knows you would know and all that stuff. And they finally accept that this is Joseph. This is their brother, the brother they sold into slavery. And in verses 5 and 7 through 9, Joseph kind of explains it to his brothers. Uh, God sent me before you. God, God sent me ahead of you. All the things that you were planning on doing, God was using them to prepare for this moment. It was not you. It was God. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. God took care of everything. There's a key thing here. Joseph saw who was in charge. Joseph saw whose plan it was, who was overseeing the whole thing. He recognizes when, when these brothers had come in and, and they had gone back to get Benjamin and he had this time to process, Joseph recognized that everything was orchestrated by God and for God. He tells us that everything he does is for his glory. And sometimes that can sound egotistical, but it's not because he's wanting his glory shine, not for him, but for us to come to him because we have free will, because we have the opportunity to choose things. He wants us to choose to love him. He doesn't want to force us to. And Joseph here recognized that everything was done by God. The good and the bad was all God. A lot of people will say God is good all the time as long as all the things are good. But when they're watching their child die, are they still going to say God is good all the time? Because the plan is God's. It's not yours. 
You think you have a plan. You think you've laid out how your life is going to go. You think you're in control of it. But you're not. It's not your plan. It's God's plan. He orchestrates it all. Each day, he is in control of every single step of it. And understanding this should give us peace and comfort. You should have comfort in knowing that the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God of the universe is caring and looking out for you. 1 Peter 5, 7, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares for you. The providential God of the universe, the God who is inherently invested and interacting with you on this earth cares about you and your life. He cares about what happens. And even when bad things happen, he's targeting those to prepare you for other things. So here's the encouragement I want you to take today. No matter what happens, no matter what you face, no matter what comes up, no matter what is laid before you, good, bad, or indifferent, you can and you should trust in him. Rely on him, rely on his power, rely on his ability to control everything. Nothing is happening in your life that he has not ordained. You can read the story of Job. He ordained everything that happened to Job. And in your life, it is all a part of the plan to grow you to be more like Christ. It's all a part of the plan to bring you to Christ. It's all a part of the plan to bring someone else to Christ. It's not about you. It's about others. And he has this all set up to do these things. He ordains it all. And it's preparing you to spend eternity with him. Because we are heirs to the kingdom of God. We are adopted into his family. We are adopted children. The scriptures tell us that we are above the angels because we are made in the image of God Almighty. Not the angels, we are. And so when we come to Christ, we are adopted into his family. And when you're adopted, that can never be rescinded. It can never be taken away. When, if I were to adopt a child, I can never disown that child. I can disown my biological ones, but I can't disown my adopted ones. You are in God's family. And so I want you to seek to be in the middle of his plan for your life. There is no better place. Uh, I've said it on our Sunday mornings. I don't think I've ever shared it here. There's a missionary that I follow. He's a man's man missionary. His name's Victor Marks. Um, he runs All Things Possible Ministries. And in this, they have two different aspects to the ministry that I know of. I, I could be missing other things, but uh, he was a for former Special Forces warrior, um, uh, martial arts specialist. And uh, he started off going into prisons to try to reach youth. He was a troubled youth. And so he wants to reach those people in prison. And so he would go in and speak to them and, and try to bring them the hope of Christ. And that has evolved into him being a gun-toting missionary. Uh, he and his team oftentimes for many years were going into Iraq and Syria to try to rescue in particular women and children from ISIS and to, to get them out. But he would go in with his, his M4 and he'd go in with his body armor and his Humvee and, and his pistol. And they, they had to be ready to fight. They had to, as he puts it, they have to be ready to be, to bring violence, um, for the saving of those that need saving. Uh, anyways, my point being that, uh, people have asked him, that's crazy, dangerous missionary work. And his response has always been, there's nowhere safer than in the middle of God's will. No matter what is swirling around you, you will not be safer and more at peace than if you're in the middle of God's will. So if you don't know him, if you don't have that peace, contact us here. You can email, you can call the church, 
Um, you can get on the Facebook page for Bancroft Congregational Church. You can message us, and uh, we would love to talk to you and try to, to help you on that process. And if you do know him, remember to get in the middle of his will no matter where it takes you. And to be at peace no matter what is swirling around outside of you. And so I encourage you again to be blessed, be a blessing. God loves you.